the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. Good time. And then let's see just a little reflection on the Holy Family, the feast from yesterday. Um, you know what a great example of that the first shall be last and the last shall be first. Uh, um, you know, all, all members of the Holy Family were without sin, but Christ was the most qualified to lead the family, second the Blessed Virgin, and then St. Joseph, last of all, was the least qualified to lead, uh, to be in charge. He was the least capable, the least brilliant, the least intelligent, whatever. I mean, you know, go down the list. Uh, and yet that was the very one God placed in charge. And so that's a great lesson. It is not always those who are most competent that God chooses, but those who are going to accomplish his will. Um, now, mutual love and sacrifice is the key. The, the big difference is people want to apply the Holy Family to themselves. <laughs> uh, is a little different because you have to take into account that we are all sinful creatures. We sin, uh, we fail, and the Holy Family was without sin. So there's kind of a big difference there. Uh, but what does that mean for us? Um, in that... Um, you have to deal with people, other people with selfish motives. The Blessed Virgin, St. Joseph, they never acted selfishly. They never acted uh, with a petty motive. Uh, they were never immature. Uh, they were always absolutely perfect. I mean, even still, St. Joseph made mistakes. That's kind of an important uh, lesson there. And certainly he felt the pressure of leading the Holy Family. Uh, but when you have people who do make mistakes, and when you have people that they don't know what is true, they, and, they, and they don't, even if they do, they don't want to do it, and they are capable of acting uh, vindictively, with petty, out of spite. Um, you know, they know what's wrong and they do it anyways and they make a bad decision and they don't care. That's what happens in regular marriages. How do you deal with that? Like, how, how, how am I supposed to model myself after the Holy Family when nobody sinned at all? Um, so, okay, so first of all, um, the, the, the goal is learning to subject ourselves to God's hierarchy. Is it God established these things for a reason and a purpose? Uh, above the wife is her husband, and above children are, are the mother and the father. Uh, but above everybody is the natural law, right? And so no husband has the right to command his wife to do something against the natural law. If a husband commands his wife or children to do something that is sinful, they ought not, in fact, they must not obey. It's kind of like the, the, um, the analogy of when the parents leave and put the older brother in charge, he can't tell the other children to do something that the parents have said specifically don't do that. So that there's a similar thing here, right? A husband can't tell a wife to do something God has said not to do. And that includes not just the Ten Commandments, but again, uh, the principles of right reason, um, uh, other, other um, principles of the natural law. I don't have time to go into that now. A good example or illustration of this, <coughs> um, and this is from stories from the Catechist. A young boy um, who was, was in a family, this is a number of hundred or so years ago, and the father, uh, they were Catholic, but the father was not a very good one, was kind of falling away, losing his faith. And he told his wife he was, they were going to have meat on Fridays. And she, you know, she sh uh, really shouldn't have, but, you know, being weak, she goes ahead and she makes, makes meat for the family on Fridays. And this is when it's, it's a serious sin. No Catholic can eat meat on Fridays on any Friday. And the boy refuses. Nope, I'm not going to eat meat, Dad. I'm sorry. You know, young boy, 12 or 11, 10 or 11, 12, I don't know, something like that. Uh, the father's furious. You're going to eat this meat. I, I uh, you know, I made your, um, your mother made this for you, that kind of thing. And there's no dad the church says otherwise. So his dad sends him up to his, his room with no supper. Fine, go up to your room, no supper. And his mom feels bad for him, so she brings him some food that is not, doesn't have meat in it. And, and this is where the obedience comes in. The boy tells his mother, uh, no, dad said no supper. And I can't obey my father when he said eat meat on Friday, but I can obey him when he says I can't have supper. And because I want to obey uh, when I can, I'm glad to do it. So I'm going to sit up here and I'm not going to have supper. Uh, so that, that, that is what obedience means, right? Proper obedience to authority. Uh, um, and that's an easy example, right? Uh, because, you know, somebody in authority is telling you don't, you know, to contradict the law of God. And so this, the similar thing would be, um, we're not, I don't want my kids going to Mass on Sunday. I'm sorry, I'm taking them, and you can't stop me. Here's where it gets into the gray area. I don't want my kids going to the Latin Mass on Sunday. They were all going to go to the Novus Ordo. Ooh, how about that one? Right? So that's where women, that's where it comes in, and they find it hard to accept the decision of their husband. Or, or, or vice versa. We're all going to go to Latin Mass. I don't want to go to Latin Mass. I'm taking my kids to Novus Ordo, uh, says, you know, says the wife to her husband. Hmm. How does obedience work in that? Beyond the scope of this little fervorino, um, but in general, uh, how wives have to accept the, what they feel are the wrong decisions of their husband. They're, it's not like a sin. So it's like, yeah, they have to do it, but they really feel this is the wrong decision and the family's going to suffer. How is that God's will? 
God's will is not that the family suffer because of your husband's bad decision, uh, but that because the family is suffering, everybody does it well. Uh, There is wisdom in suffering. There is a benefit to suffering, and that is God's will for the family. You are suffering right now. The husband made a bad decision. Endure it well. This too shall pass. That is God's will. God's will is not that the wife rebel and throw a fit and try to get her husband to change his mind by, you know, uh, nagging, whining, or whatever it may be. That's not the case because very often the wife is wrong uh, and the husband has made the right decision and, and she has to submit in order to see that. That's not always the case, but it does help that, you know, uh, there's one of two situations. I'm wrong and I'll learn that by submitting or in submitting everybody suffers, but then everybody still, we learn from it and we suffer well. Okay. Husbands grow up, right? Uh, accept every, everyone's mistakes as your own. That's what you're supposed to do. Uh, you know, husbands want to claim this authority and power of the family. And then when it comes time for the negative side of that, accountability and responsibility, oh, they don't want any. Yeah, you're going to get blamed for everything except it. Um, because really, I mean, deep down, people people know that it's not really your fault, but that's what a leader is supposed to do. He's supposed to accept things as his fault, even when they're kind of not really. And every woman knows this too. Everyone knows on the one hand, it's not really your fault, but in the, on the other, she's going to blame you for it anyways. Because, you know, maybe directly you didn't do it, but certainly there's something you could have done that would have made had a different outcome, right? Certainly you could be doing something more, or at the very least, you could be making her feel better about the situation than you are, right? All those complicated things go on in women's minds. Just accept it. That's going to happen. You can't change the way that we were fallen uh, female human nature. It's going to be what it's going to be. I get, I get tired of hearing men talk about how irrational their wives are and they want to listen to reason. Like, look, it's irrational for you to expect your wives to always to act rationally. Um, that's, it, it, you know, nobody acts always rationally. Everybody's emotional. Uh, part of being a husband and a leader is dealing with it, dealing with what you think other, is other people's irrationality. And very often, uh, when men say women are irrational, what they really mean is she's not accepting the reasons I give her as being more important than the reasons she thinks are important. That's really what it comes down to. Um, anyway, so sorry, little um, <laughs> going off on, on this. I've um, talked to a few married couples. Um, <laughs> holy family, saints. In the end, uh, yeah, kind of a lot going on this one. Uh, don't worry about anything except our own sanctity and those we are responsible for. If something's outside of my responsibility, I don't worry about it. I just accept it. Kind of like the weather. When it rains, you get wet. When it snows, you get cold. When it's sunny or when it's hot, you know, you sweat. That's just how it is. Uh, We can't choose the weather that comes to us, only what is our response when such weather comes. Um, Whether it's, it's, you know, the winds of change in the Vatican, in the church, in my family, in my husband, in my wife, whatever, uh, deal with it well. That is what God wants from us. There's wisdom and suffering. Uh, uh, Let's learn that wisdom. So, Oceus, St. Vitalis, Holy Family, pray for us. God bless you all. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen.